What's a hydrostatic test? Plumbing basics. Seriously, guys, we've talked about this before, but I want you to hang around till the end because I'm going to tell you why this is one of the most important things you need to know about your plumbing system. So a hydrostatic test, and number one, I don't like the word. If you go to Wikipedia, and as you'll see, go to Wikipedia and look at the definition. When external pressure is applied, and I'm making this up because I know it's in there somewhere, when pressure is applied to a tanker vessel or pipe to test the pressure. That's why I have a problem with it. We're doing a leak test here, y'all. It's not a hydrostatic test. And I know some of you plumbers are going to argue with me. Argue. I really don't care. Read the definition. So here's the thing. To do this right, all we're trying to do is figure out, is there a leak under the house? Y'all have seen the videos where I do it, but let me walk you through it and explain it to you so it really does make sense because I can argue this on both sides. Here's the deal. The homeowner says, oh my gosh, this is going to damage my system. No, it's not. Has your system ever stopped up before? Did the water in there cause any problems other than leaking out around the fixtures? Because here's what's going to happen. To do a hydrostatic test right, and I'm looking at a couple of different things, because I want to do a sewer water test. Now, here we go with Trek. I know they call it a hydrostatic test. Here's my issue. All we want to do is clog up the sewer line and fill it with water to the top of the cleanouts. Now, hopefully the top of the cleanouts are within the slab, meaning if they're too far down below the slab, they're not going to fill up enough, so you're not going to know if you've got a break right at the slab. So they may need to be extended up a little bit. That doesn't hurt anything, okay? So here's what we do. We stick a test ball in, and we block up the sewer. Now we fill it up, and we see if it holds. I'm not applying any external pressure. I'm just filling your sewer system with water. Your sewer system, which is made to convey water, now has water in it. Now, what is wrong with that? So now that that part is done, I'm going to go put a gauge on the water system. And I'm going to open up the valve wherever I put it, washing machine, hose bib, wherever I put it. I'm going to open the valve and see what the pressure is. Then I'm going to go turn off the water meter. Now, you know what? There's no extra pressure to be put in. Whatever the city pressure is, which your system is at all day long, every day, whatever that system is at, that's what we're going to leave it at. So say it's at 80 PSI and I open the water, my gauge goes up to 80, it stops right there, I go turn off the meter, I come back in, look at it, it's still right there, and I take a picture of it. Now, when I wait 15 minutes and come back, it should be at 80 PSI. What if it's not? What if it's gone down? Well, that would tell me that there is a leak in the system, somewhere between the meter and the house. It could be under the house or it could be out in the yard. So at this point, I want to see, is there a valve box by the front of the house? Which there's normally a valve box somewhere within two or three feet of the house, and normally it's by the two-way clean house that we just filled up with water. The reason being, plumbers like to run their water line in the same line that they run their sewer line in. That way they don't have to dig an extra ditch. Okay? Okay. 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 It makes sense. Why spend the extra labor to dig that when you can just run it in the exact same ditch? So the plumber puts the valve box there. If the valves are good, meaning if there's a ball valve in there, I tell my plumbers not to use the old gate valves. If they tighten them down too much, it strips the brass and they're not going to be able to turn your water back on. And you're going to be upset. And you're going to say it's my fault because you've got an old faulty valve. So if it's got an old gate valve in there, I tell my plumbers, tell them we need to rebuild the valve box. Now, plumbers, that's a good sell. They need it. It is something that is going to improve their system and make their system better. Homeowners, it's a really good idea. And here's why. If you don't have the right tools to turn off the water at the meter, or if in your city you're not allowed to turn the water off at the meter, you really want that valve so that if there's ever a flood in your house, you come out, open the box, turn the valve. One. One. One turn, 90 degrees, and the water goes off. And I almost made the water go off. That's stupid. That shuts it down, though. So here's why I like having that. 
Because while they're doing that test, I can turn the valve back on at the meter, get my pressure back upright, and if there's a valve in the yard, I can turn that valve off. Now if the pressure drops at the house, I know the leak is under the house. If the pressure doesn't drop, now I know the leak's out in the yard. I've already isolated it. Now, if I'm doing this, because I do a lot of sewer water tests following up for foundation companies. Why would they want to know that? Because water causes foundation issues. They pay me to come out and do a sewer water test to make sure that their warranty is good, to make sure that the work that they just did isn't going to fall apart. The house isn't going to break. There's not going to be problems because you've got a leak in your plumbing system. Once that water test is done, I go back to my sewer, check my level, and then pull it. Guys, we never apply external pressure. So to hear a homeowner tell me, I don't want you to do this because my real estate agent said you're going to blow apart my plumbing system. It doesn't happen. Now, if you have a plumber show up with a hydrostatic pump to pump up the system, make him leave before he does anything. And here's another thing. If you have a plumber show up with a camera and he tells you, I can test the system with this camera, he does not know what he's doing. You can look at most of the piping with the camera, and yes, you can tell if there's a major break, but guys, putting a camera in the system is not going to tell me if there's a leak anywhere. That doesn't happen. And the plumbers that are out selling you that, you need to tell them to leave. <clears throat> so we've talked about the hydrostatic test, okay? We've talked about you know, filling it up with water. Yes, it's a hydro system. Yes, there's water in it. Yes, there's static pressure that remains because once you fill it, you're going to leave it right there. But guys, this is not a true to definition hydrostatic test. This is basically a water sewer test. Now, why would this be important? If you are buying a house or if you're a real estate agent representing somebody buying a house, you want to make sure that your buyer tells the seller they want to do a sewer water test. Don't call it a hydrostatic, call it a sewer water. This is why. This is the exact same test that's done on the house when it's built. Meaning, if I build a new house, when I put the underground in, I have to fill this system with water to show the city or the authority having a jurisdiction that this system is holding, it's holding true, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. Guys, whether we do this test when the house is being built or 20 years later when somebody's buying it, it should still hold water. Now, my number one tip as to why, guys, the cost of not doing this is crazy. And I'm going to tell you two different stories. Number one, I had a friend that I did plumbing for over here on the other side of Richardson. He called me about a month later and says, hey, some plumbers came out and told some friends of mine who bought a house in his neighborhood that there was a leak. And I went over there and watched the video, and, man, it was channel rot. The bottom of their sewer was rotted out. Why is that a big deal? Because their real estate agent didn't tell them, you need a sewer water test. So after buying this $300,000 house, they had to spend $60,000 to fix the plumbing. How would you feel if you bought a house and then a few months later had to spend 20% more to get the plumbing operational? Because, guys, that's what it was. I asked the couple, I said, have y'all heard of slab leaks? Do you know about them? And they said, no, we're from California. We don't have these. Now, I don't know if they do in Cali or not. I work here in Texas. But I will tell you this. The next question I asked them was, did your real estate agent tell you anything at all about it? And they said no. So to me, guys, if you're a real estate agent, please take better care of your people than that. Tell them about a sewer water test and tell them why. Now, I'm going to tell you another story of a couple that bought a house in Richardson. They knew there was a leak under the house, but the seller told them, hey, there's one little leak and it's right over here. It'll be easy for y'all to fix. Well, number one, when there's a leak under a house, it's never easy to fix. We got over there with cameras and test balls and located multiple leaks. We ended up having to tunnel about 65, 75 feet under that house. Guys, this should have never happened. But they knew about the sewer water test. They didn't want to do it beforehand. They didn't want the seller to have to pay to have all this work done because the seller had already told them where the leak was. If you are buying a house or you know someone buying a house, please do a sewer water test or recommend it to someone you know that's buying it. The last thing you want to do is see somebody pay good money for a house 
and then have to pay anywhere from forty to sixty thousand dollars to get the plumbing fixed. If you're a plumber and you do sewer water test, please leave me a comment down below and let me know how do you do them. Do you put in your test ball? Do you blow it up? Do you do you wax your balls so no water leaks around it? These nuts. <laughs> Got him. Do you fill the water all the way to the top of the cleanouts, or do you just run a camera in the system and say, Hey, I don't see anything that could be leaking. So you're good on your water test. How do you do it? Do you put it on a hose bib? Do you put it on the washing machine box? What do you do and how long do you leave it? And also leave the comment. If you're a buyer, did you ever do this guys, please leave me comments down below about this one, because this is one that really gets to me. We've grown our business by taking great care of real estate agents. And the reason being, we teach them about slab leaks and leak detection, what all it entails, and what it takes to fix it. I've got another video where I completely show us doing a sewer water test. If you hadn't seen it yet, please click over there and check it just so you see how it's done the right way and you'll at least know what's going on. And if you hadn't seen the other videos, check those out because I teach a lot about this. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.